Hi, this is Dave Vellante. We're back at SAP Week at EMC 42 South Street in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. EMC's brought in about 200 of its customers and some of its partners, including SAP. We're here with Mike Harding, who is a senior architect. He was on Project Propel. Uh, we love to call this the dog food segment because we're talking about SAP. It's sort of a, you know, a high level senior executive crowd. We like to maybe call this drinking your own champagne, Mike. So, uh, yep. so th thanks for coming on. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. So you are the senior uh, architect technical lead for the whole Project Propel. So talk a little bit about the scope of, of what your efforts involved in that regard. Really what we're trying to do is take an SAP, uh, let's say a kit heterogeneous application stack, right, and figure out the best way to make it run on top of a vBlock. So SAP, as we know, has a, has a series of products from their old ABAP-based uh, applications to now the Java-based applications, and now you have the newer business objects type applications, right? How do we fully virtualize all that with these heterogeneous stack on a common platform was really what we were trying to focus on and keep it 100% virtual. So let's talk about the before, uh, break down what that looked like, and we can talk you know, about the after just from a configuration and technical standpoint. What did it look like, uh, uh, the, 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 the as is, if, as sometimes people call it? Right, so highly customized uh, Oracle-based application. Um, I think about two million or so lines of code, I believe. Um, and really where we're trying to take it to is completely vanilla, uh, right, you know, change the business process to run on top of SAP, right? Let's not customize SAP. We've got to stay on the upgrade path. That was one of our core principles of the entire project. Um, and in fact, that's something that we're working on right now, quite shortly after go live, is we're already working on an, an application upgrade to keep us up to date with all the, the latest and greatest technologies from the SAP product standpoint. And you were, so you're running on, on Unix, uh, yep. right? Uh, so yep. Red, Hat, Red Hat 5 or Red Hat 6 actually now throughout the, uh, throughout the environment primarily do it. So, so Linux now, yep. but w previously it was Unix or li Linux? Uh, previously it was uh, Unix, yep. Okay. okay, so you had kind of a proprietary Unix system. You've migrated to uh, x86 Linux, is yep. that right? Correct, yep. Okay. And, and so the, the applications are supporting um, today how many users? Today we have around uh, 10 to 12,000 users. And again, that's across not just the ERP space, but also analytics um, and planning and consolidations and some of those other products. So um, am, am I to understand that prior to the migration to Propel, it was really focused on, um, on, on sort of the core application, you weren't doing the analytics piece of it, you've now brought that in? Correct, a lot of the analytics, uh, there were some analytics capabilities in place that quite frankly we had to kind of sidecar, we had to figure out the best way to get data into that existing analytics market, um, or sorry, product suite. Um, and in fact, that was one of our kind of core uh, design principles of how we would best leverage SAP BW was really as an extraction layer into that analytics space. But then uh, along the way, we had to bring on our own own operational type analytics, and that's where we used um, not just BW and business objects, but we're also leveraging HANA as well. Okay, and so your the Oracle environment was not virtualized, correct? Um, the Oracle environment actually was, well, sorry, our, we have an existing legacy Oracle environment that is virtualized. The, pe the previous one was not, correct? No, okay, and so now the SAP uh, uh, Propel environment I is virtualized, correct? You're running on x86 virtualized? Absolutely, yes. All of our databases, all of our SAP dialogues, um, even some of those one-off SAP products, things that are memory intensive, such as uh, the search engine Trex, such as Live Cache, all 100% virtualized. So a lot of customized code. You had to migrate that code. Um, did you have to freeze the code? Y yeah, we did have to freeze. Well, let's say we, we attempted to freeze the code, right? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you were sort of, street, right? <laughs> you were gassing the plane, you know, yeah. filling up the plane, fueling the plane while it was in, in flight, Correct. which is dangerous. <laughs> so Absolutely. talk about that a little bit. How did you manage that uh, complexity? Uh, well, you know, we had a core design principle throughout within, within our development community that was absolutely, you know, no enhancements whatsoever. Granted, we had to, you know, make a few exceptions to that along the way, um, but really it wasn't that difficult to pitch this because, you know, there were a lot of pain points involved with what the old system looked like. Um, you know, the fact that it was barely getting through quarter end closes uh, due to the level of customizations, due to the level of kind of code that we put in there ourselves. So uh, going with that really vanilla uh, principle for our Propel project was not that difficult. Okay, so basically you, you said to the, the lines of business, look, we have to stop servicing new requests. Uh, now things like compliance you probably had to deal with, but, but um, new functions, gonna, we're gonna freeze that until we go live with the new system, right? 
Correct, or, or unless we could take advantage of it based on the SAP products we bring brought to us. But we really did try to focus on a one-to-one. -one. One of our kind of going in principles was crawl, walk, run, right? So let's take what we have, convert it to SAP, um, and then we'll move into more of a, you know, we'll, we'll take more advantage of the SAP capabilities. And that's why it's so important that we now stay on the upgrade path. So as new capabilities are being produced by SAP, we're bringing them into our environment such that the business can make use of them. So talk a little bit more about um, the infrastructure that you're running on now. Uh, it's x86, so, so what is it? It's, it's, it's vBlock, it's, uh, so it's obviously it's virtualized, you got Cisco UCS in there. What's the back-end storage? Uh, EMC. <laughs> no, I know it's EMC, but is it VNX? Is it, uh, is it Symmetrics? Is it all of the above? VMAX. VMAX. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, VMAX, okay. And, and so, okay. So you got the, the highest performance storage that you have us using Flash in there? We are using, well, we're using Fast for, uh, to support our, uh, both our EMC and our BW databases at the moment. So um, Fast, you know, the Fast basically where it goes between Flash and, and um, Fiber Channel, et cetera. Um, what we did was we allocated some of that fla Fast uh, to both, uh, again, the ECC and BW databases. So that's your ERP core and the analytics piece. Okay, and you're using HANA. So HANA is an in-memory database, as many of you know. Uh, there's not a ton of installations out there, but it's been around for a couple years now. Talk about HANA, what you're doing with HANA, what kind of value it brings to you, uh, what's different uh, from, a, from a business value standpoint. So really, uh, one of the keys to our business model is the ability to kind of react quickly at the very end of quarter when we got to get products out the door, right? That's really all falls on kind of operational reporting. Um, within the absence of HANA, our operational reports had a lot of latency to them, and we're up to two or three hours uh, in some plants uh, in terms of what the business needed to make key decisions on how they were going to, you know, close the quarter. Um, HANA uh, basically enabled us to throw some of those reports uh, into that kind of real-time operation, what we refer to as an op operational data mart, really. Um, I refer to it as a HANA as a sidecar. Um, and we've been able to kind of position a few of those key reports onto HANA, uh, bringing down those response times to about seven or eight minutes. So talk about that a little bit more. So you got end of quarter, you got sales guys booking business, you're trying to figure out what gets built, what gets shipped, how to prioritize that, <laughs> how to make sure that you're maximizing customer satisfaction, your financial performance, and that you can actually execute on all this stuff so the employees don't all walk out the door. Um, yep. So, so, so uh, did I, first of all, did I get that right? And talk a little bit about how the new system is helping you do that. So, yeah, so exactly what you just said. I mean, really it's, uh, we're focusing on kind of those operational key decisions that have to happen at the end of quarter. Um, we also are, so it's really kind of uh, manufacturing floor type decisions. We also are, however, leveraging HANA to support some of our financial decision making, not so much right then at end of quarter, but, you know, shortly thereafter uh, as we're getting ready to close the books and such. Now, talk a little bit about the, the virtualization aspects of this. Um, I, I know early on a lot of people were concerned about the virtualization tax. Um, <coughs> talk about the performance of the new system relative to the old system from a user perspective. What are they seeing? So um, the last quarter or so that we had on the old system, um, it, the thing almost fell apart on us, right? And, and on this now, yes, we are fully virtualized. Um, our response times are right in line what you would see, let's say, at a, I would say more of a well-performing SAP um, shop, about one second dialogue response time, um, to, you know, across all of our dialogues, across all of our applications. Um, so we are fully virtualized. The, the end users, some of their key like sales order processing type transactions, which used to take upwards of 20 or 30 minutes, I believe, are now down to just a couple minutes. So I'm going to ask you, Mike, the, um, the action item question that I asked Kate before. And I'm going to ask you to focus in on, you know, you're talking to the CTO. It's a technology integration issue. And I know there are many, many, many. The punch list of this project must have just been enormous. But from a, what's the gestalt of technology integration from a high level? What advice would you give to CTOs out there trying to you know, go forward with a project like this? Skill sets, it's all about the skill sets. So um, one of the things that we had going for us uh, as, as, an SA, as a new SAP customer, um, there are a lot of SAP customers out there who have, you know, have developed a lot of uh, ABAP type uh, skills for, from a development standpoint, for better or worse. There are plenty of, uh, let's say, non, not very proficient ABAP, skill, ABAP skills out there. We had a, a, a really healthy core of Oracle developers here um, at EMC. Those Oracle developers know exactly how code should operate inside a database, how to best maximize it. They are able to really kind of translate that skill set into the ABOP layer. So the ability to, I think, to, to leverage your, your existing skill sets as much as possible. We have another example with our common integration cloud, or sorry, our application integration cloud, where we took an existing skill set um, based on a, on a, across a suite of VMware tools um, and leveraged them to basically support an entire new 
uh, middleware product that we, we effectively homebrew. And you had to bring in new skill sets as well around SAP? Yeah, yeah that's, that's why I'm here. So, okay, and, and so what happens to all the Oracle skill sets? Do they get retrained? Do they get reapplied? How's that all working? Right, so exactly, like I just said, we're able to translate a lot of those. So from a business standpoint, I mean, business key decisions are, are going to stay the same, right? But at a technology standpoint, um, some of our best ABOPers right now were probably the best Oracle developers only three years ago, right? Um, so they've been able to, because of the, the intimacy that SAP has at the database layer, uh, they were able to translate those skills rather easily. Awesome story, Mike. Thanks very much. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. It's great to Thanks meet you. you. All right, everybody, keep it right there. We're back with our next guest. We're here at uh, SAP Week, 42 South Street, Hopkinton, Massachusetts, at the EBC. We'll be right back.